This is FriendQuest. Hey everybody. Um, welcome to FriendQuest. Um, it's actually just going to be me today. Uh, we have uh, holidays coming up, so there's, you know, the usual scheduling issues that, uh, you know, sort of come with that. So, hope you don't mind. Um, I mean, you know, Griff's a busy guy, and, you know, we both got our... Uh, you know, holidays to deal with, so. But, um, I figured I'd do, like, a little solo thing. I have, a uh, a couple games that I want to, really want to play that are, like, they're, they're really special to me. This one is, this is, this one is, uh, one that I've played when I was a lot, when I was younger. I actually came in a pack of a bunch of, uh, point-and-click adventure games that I really got into. Um... Um, among them was like um, Monkey Island, which is which I'll I'll play that one too eventually, because that one's like that one's really dear to me. Um, but this one's really good, and it's especially dear to me because like I like I like watching playthroughs of this game. Like I just this one. Uh, this is a uh, <laughs> sorry. By the way, this is King's Quest V. If, for those who don't know, um, uh, and uh, King's Quest V and six are among my favorite games of all time and I just the the tone of the game is so it's just so pretty and peaceful. I mean like this is pretty dramatic right here. What has happened? <laughs> so King that's King Graham uh and that owl there his name is Cedric. There's some voice acting in this one. Um <laughs> Happened to your castle? Yeah. I at all. Yes, I did. You did. <laughs> well then, what happened? It's but it's a bunch of like, uh, it's an endearing but like, kind of kind of awkward, cringy uh, dialogue. But I love it. Who did it? Ooh, I just happened to be visiting with an old friend when I saw him materialize out of thin air. Thank goodness he didn't notice me. Oh. Don't stop now. Go on. Go on. Look, look at him. He's got a little monocle and a little vest. That swirls faster and faster Aww. around the castle. With another incantation, Mordak then caused the wind to draw the castle up into the sky and out of sight. Ooh, it was something <laughs> to see, all right. Ooh. Like awkward pauses. Why? Why would this wizard, Mordak, want my castle? What could he have against me and my family? So, uh, dialogue timing in video games. It's still it's something they still haven't quite gotten down yet. And your family. Well, perhaps I can help you. My employer also happens to be a wizard, which is why I recognized Mordak. Ooh, unlike Mordak though, my employer is a very good wizard. His name is Crispin Arthur. But we all call him Crispin for short. Crispin. The only problem is, you see. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Is he alright? Oh, yeah, he's fine. He's fine. <clears throat> anyway, oh, where was I? Oh, yes. <laughs> The only problem is that Crispin is getting on in years and tends to be a bit forgetful. I don't know. This doesn't sound as if it would work. Oh, sure it would. Crispin is a very qualified wizard, one of the best. He just gets a little forgetful now and again. That's all. Yes. So Crispin's a now good wizard, but the other guy, Mordak, he's a bad a wizard. He's part of the he's part of the Black Cloak what Society or something like that. And he, uh, he stole King's, King Graham's castle. Oh, excuse me for saying, Your Majesty, but you don't have a choice. You must come with me. I'm sure Crispin can help you. Well, yeah, we gotta save our family. Of course we don't have a choice. Alright, so yeah, he's gonna sprinkle some fairy dust on us. Alright, so, back to what I was saying. Um, what is that stuff? <laughs> Pretty much, we're just going to be going and flying off to uh, to go see his uh, wizard friend. Um, but uh, this game, 
and uh, the the sequel the, the the sequel to this game, uh, King's Quest VI, uh, are very dear to me because of uh, there, there was a time when I was like really sick. I was I had some I had some really bad issues that I was working through, and um, I, it it was uh, it was a, a playthrough of this game and the next game and the the sequel that just like I like I watched those two, uh, and it like it put me in just a really good mood. I don't know if anybody else has this thing where like you know like when you were younger and uh, as, uh, and you would uh, get like you'd stay home s sick from school and you'd watch like you know you'd watch TV and like certain shows would be on only during that time when you're usually at school but then those those shows kind of like you related those shows to being sick and but like being like comforted by like. You know, your mom would make you chicken soup or something like that. So you'd be like, you'd have a cold and be eating chicken soup, and you'd be watching like The Price Is Right. That's that's a pretty common one. Is uh, watching The Price Is Right on a, on like a sick day or a snow day or something like that. And it was just sort of like a cozy feeling. That's what these games have for me. Is uh, like, I just you know, in a time when I was just really sick and was not doing well, these kind of put me in a nice, calm like comfortable state and it kind of helped me through my recovery so um so yeah I, re I really love these games there is some nostalgia with this with this particular game because i played it when i was younger oh my god the hell of a fall there Ooh, looks like the fairy dust just wore off <sighs> just barely wore off Cedric, where have you been <laughs> So yeah, there's gonna be a lot of like talking exposition and stuff like that in this game. But like, you know, I figure because I'm playing the solo, it's it's better to have a game that has like voiceovers and stuff. So it, like, I, I can like react off of uh, the characters. Cause usually I got I usually I got I got Griff here to take uh, to to like ha you know have some fun with. But <laughs> so yeah, that's Crispin. He's a good wizard. Cedric. Although he wears a black cloak, and uh, Mordak, who I, who I said was part of like the Black Cloak Society, I think they're called, or something like that. Uh, there's just like a group of like evil wizards or like just bad dudes. They called themselves the Black Cloaks. I oh, having yeah, having some tea there. The Society of Wizards is always taken a dim view of Mordak and his abuse of his power. Oh. Why he's even been put on suspension a few times. It never seems to do any good, though. Crispin, why would Mordak want to take my family or castle? What did we ever do to him? I'm afraid I don't know the answer to that. Mordak is a very unpredictable wizard. I've never understood that evil mind of his. Ooh. I thought perhaps you could help his majesty, Crispin. That's why I brought him here. Well... I thought you'd be of use, you now. old I fart. I be a very powerful wizard at one time, you know. But I've gotten a little rusty lately. <laughs> a little rusty? That's quite enough from you, Cedric. Shut up, Owl. Oh, yes, sir, Crispin, sir. <laughs> I don't know what I have that would be of much use to you. Most of my wizard stuff is pretty old and worn out. But let's see what I can find. So yeah, the uh Oh god, he's so slow. The the voice acting in this is a little rough. Some of it's not so bad. Like the narrator's kind of kind of nice to listen to. Like I said, like I use this like I watch this uh playthroughs of this as sort of, sort of like a comfort. Like sometimes I fall asleep to this stuff. Um, yeah, so like the pacing's a little slow. Uh, gosh. <laughs> oh, that won't do. That's all used up. Hmm. It might work. Here, eat this. <laughs> what? What is that? That's an old piece of magical white snake I had left over from last year. With it, you'll be able to communicate with the natural and animal world. You could find that quite helpful. Oh. Here's my old I forgot about wand. that. I don't even know if it works anymore. 
most of its power may be gone. You should know that wands are like pets. They've got to get to know you before they'll work for you. Just treat it with care and respect, yeah, the, and hopefully it will do something for you. Yeah, the wand chooses the wizard. You Remember that. Going, my boy. No telling what that confounded Morak could be up to. You go with him, Cedric. Show him the way. Oh, me. Yes, you don't be <laughs> such a coward. Now go oh, on. no. He's he's going to be a coward. He's going to be exclusively you, a coward this entire game. You've done for me. Like... Cedric's a good guy. He sticks with you, but dang, is it is is he not a coward? Frick. All right. So yeah, that's the good wizard. That's uh, Crispin. He gave us a wand and I Why guess a piece of fest. what did he call so it? White it, snake. Majesty? Please don't call me Your Majesty, Cedric. It's much too formal. I'd like it if you'd just call me Graham. Be delighted to, Graham. Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, yes, the town. You might be able to find some supplies there. It's just over a little hill to the south, not too far. Well, then, let's be on our way, Cedric. All right, so yeah, so yeah, he's he's King Graham, but he doesn't like, um, he's uh, he's sort of a king of the people sort of thing. He doesn't like to make a big deal about being a king like he he's uh uh you know like he's obviously not in like robes or anything right now so he doesn't he doesn't uh you know he, he's not he's not all about the attention he likes to lay low because he's you know he's a good dude um oh actually give me one second so i am i'm gonna have a i'm gonna have a walkthrough on hand just because this is a sierra game and there's a lot of like dead ends and traps and ways to die. So one thing you got to keep in mind is you got to save the game. Uh, oh, apparently. Uh, oh, this is from a previous play playthrough. So, <laughs> yeah. So, cat question mark. Right. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, just start replacing stuff here. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll call this a see. So. Friend quest, and then uh, we'll say uh, we'll we'll say it's the start of the game, so we'll just replace that there. But uh, give me, uh, let's see, give me a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up a walkthrough here. Um, I'm gonna try not to rely on it too much because I do I knew I do remember quite a bit from this game. Um, but like I said, it's a Sierra game. There's a lot of places you can get stuck, and uh, you know, like you. Like there's there's so many like random th events that happen that you just like you die and there's not much you can do about it they just happen um so you kind of have to be ready for it uh, let's see here um, okay all right yeah I think I'm all set here okay so yeah King's Quest Five um. I think it came out in like 1990. Yeah, I think it was 1990. Um, I don't remember when I first played it, but like I said, I got in a pack with a bunch of other games. A poisonous snake. <laughs> Watch out, a poisonous snake. Uh, that's yeah. Thank you, Cedric. Yeah, so there's a snake over here. A large venomous snake blocks Graham's passage to the east. Yeah, so we're we're not gonna go that way because we just don't have a way to deal with the snake right now. Um, uh, so let me see. Let's let's go over here. See what we can find. God, he walks so slow. I think I can turn the speed up. So I'll probably do that in a second. Oh. Oh. All right. So yeah, let me let me turn the speed up just a smidge. Actually, let's just go. Full blast. See what it goes. How it goes. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. That's pretty. That's fast enough. Upon a fallen log sits a dashing young prince who looks very sad and confused. A sad and confused prince. Let's talk to him. Uh, excuse me, young man. Sorry to bother you, but I couldn't help but notice you sitting there on that log. I was wondering if there was anything wrong. Why, yes. As a matter of fact, there is. I've been searching everywhere for my fiancé. 
She's a beautiful princess with long golden tresses, fetching blue eyes and smooth creamy skin. Have you seen her anywhere about? No, sorry. I haven't seen anyone like that. That's what I figured. No one has seen her. I bet that a witch who lives in the dark forest had something to do with her disappearance. It's like she's never existed. I'll keep it's like I'm making her up. If I see her, I'll let her know you're looking for her. I would appreciate that. Well, I guess I'd better get back to looking for her. I'm not <laughs> ever going to find her just sitting around here. Right. Thanks for your concern. I mean, yeah, I guess I'm concerned, but whatever. Yeah, so yeah, he's uh he's a prince. He's looking for his uh his lady who uh, might have been kidnapped by a witch or something. So, we'll see. We'll see where that ends up. What a wonderful bluebird. It could almost make Graham happy again if it wasn't for his family. <laughs> it's really sad. <laughs> Graham feels the eyes of many creatures upon him as he follows a meandering path through the thick wood. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that Christmas guy gave us a thing that let us talk to, like, nature? Like, I never really put that together. I completely forgot about that that part. I thought, I thought just, like, animals just could talk in this world, and that was just a thing. The bluebird is too busy taking a bath to answer Graham. Yeah, so I guess, well, the bluebird's not going to talk to us, so whatever. Maybe the snake will talk to us. Um. There we go. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Like it's <laughs> controls are a little. Like I said, this was in 1990, so you know you're gonna have to. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna have to excuse the the controls a little bit. Um. So let me save. I'm going to. Uh, we'll save this as snake. Uh. Talks with snakes. Okay, so let's see if we can talk to the snake, because, like, that... In silence, the large serpent eyes Graham menacingly. Okay, no, it's not, no he's not. He is not a good guy. All right. Well, yeah, because, like, I could talk to Cedric already. Like, he's an owl. Well, then again, he's an owl in a sweater vest and a, and a monocle, so... One would expect to be able to converse with him. Um, all right, uh, let's see. All right, let's go. Let's go down. Let's go south here. Uh, oh, yeah, right. This is the town that Cedric was talking about. So, uh, there's a little cow here. Secure within a small pen, a spotted cow quietly chews her cud. Aw, little moo cow. Unfortunately. The cow doesn't have anything to say. Her mouth is too full of cud. <laughs> oh, all right. She's, she's busy eating, so she doesn't have time for us right now. Um, preemptively, let me see. Turn down the music, the volume just a little bit. I wish there was a different volume for voice and music, because, like, once we get into town here, the music is going to go up crazy high, I'm pretty sure. So, well, let's, let's just go in. I'll just wait for you here. I had a nasty run-in with a big dog once, and I feel much safer out here. Yeah, so uh, that's Cedric the Coward. Oh yeah, that's oh yeah. The music's the music's blasting. Uh, I don't want to turn it down because then we can't hear the people talk. Well, fine. All right. Okay, that's we got the tailor over here. Toys. Quaint houses and little sh No. There we go. Uh, shoe shop. Alright, so we got a tailor, we got a toy shop, and a shoe shop. So let's go into the, uh, let's go into the tailor shop here. Oh. May I help you, sir? Uh, let's see. I'm interested in buying something here. Let me show you some things. A fine piece of cloth. With this material, I could make you beautiful shirts. There isn't a more beautiful piece of fabric to be found anywhere. 
With this, I could make you the finest trousers you've ever had. Oh yeah, gotta get some nice well, trousers. What do you think? Well, right now I'm just looking. Thanks anyway. I'm just gonna browse. Here, here. Whatever you say, I'm just here to help. All right, so there's a sweet-looking cloak over here. Let's In see the corner of the shop, draped casually over a tailor's form, Graham sees a thick fur-lined cloak. Here, let me help you with that. Oh, that cloak fits you perfectly. It just looks wonderful on you. <laughs> let me. Tell I like the you guy, like. In the changing room in the back. Be warm during the coming winter. Very, oh, he's just like in his underpants. Let me know if you wish to buy it. All right. Yeah. So I don't. I don't like have. Yeah. I got a wand. So that's all I got. So I don't have a way to buy anything right now. But. Uh, all right. We'll just leave. Was he following me out? What? What, what do you think I was gonna do? Oh. Uh. So yeah, there was a guy here like like fiddling with his wagon. And uh, it looks like he dropped like a coin or something, so. Bending down, Graham quickly retrieves the silver coin from the street. Nice. Okay. And then, uh, if I remember Graham correctly. An old wooden barrel on the street. There's a barrel here that's got Inside like a. Barrel, yeah, fish Graham in it. Yeah. Old, fish. Yeah, nice stinky fish. Graham leans way down into the barrel and removes huge, the smelly old fish. Yeah. Gosh, this music is just so loud. Oh my goodness. Well, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll try to turn it down in post for you guys, but uh, for me, it's just loud as heck. Alright, so I got the coin and the fish. Uh, let's go check out... Um, let's see. I guess we go to the toy shop. Look around. Let me know if you're interested in anything. Uh, let's see. We'll talk. We'll Is talk to. Okay, Papa. What? What's going on? Grandpa. Uh, yeah, my darling. Can I keep this doll? I really like her. Now, Katrina, you know these toys are for sale for other kinder. Besides, you've got plenty of oh, okay. So she's she's playing with the doll, and uh, she wants to keep it, but <laughs> no, they gotta they gotta they gotta make money. They gotta make a living, so she can't just be playing with the. You can't you can't use the merchandise like that. Are most of these toys your creation? Oh my goodness. I don't know if you guys can hear any of this. I am sorry. Like, I don't know. I, there's no way to, like, turn out just the music. It's ridiculous. Okay, so, yeah, he's just he's just complimenting him on, on all his work. Um, all right, we're, we're interested in this sled over here, but we don't have any money. That's a fine sled, isn't it? Yes, I was just admiring the workmanship. Yeah, so he's just complimenting him on his work. And then we'll, uh, we'll head out. So, basically what's going on here is, uh... We're just kind of going around, kind of introducing ourselves to people, figuring out what's going on in the town. Um... The way that, uh, King's Quest games work is you sort of, like, go around meeting people and, like, finding out their problems. And then because, you know, you're... You're King Graham. You're a great guy. You know, you go around kind of helping people, so... It's kind of just what he does. Um, this is the, uh, the shoe shop, so... They're basically completely out of merchandise. They got nothing to sell. Yeah, so business isn't super great, because they've sort of run out of things to, to sell. Like, a cobbler can't fix shoes if he doesn't have shoes to fix, you know? Uh, it's just... So, it's not going super well for these people. Um... So, let's, uh... Let's see, we looked at the sled. Alright, we'll go, we'll, we'll, we'll head out of this town just so I can freaking hear myself think. Jeez, so loud in there. 
All right. Well, hey, Cedric. All right. So, um, so thanks. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end the episode here for right now. Um, thanks for joining me. I hope, I hope this isn't like, you know, disappointing to anybody. I just kind of wanted to, uh, like, I've been wanting to do something like this anyway. So, like, I just, you know, we don't, we don't have the, we don't have the, the time during the holiday season to get together as much. So, I, you know, I figured I'd uh, fill up some time with. Uh, couple little solo uh solo games you know and uh what what better than uh than a couple of king's quest games so like i i mean i don't know if i mentioned it but i, I plan on playing uh king's quest 5 as well or uh, 6 sorry um so yeah uh p so please join me in the next episode of uh friend quest all right bye everybody <laughs>